Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about making model kits. I'm going to try not to have that glare hit you like that. This is an IMC 132nd scale Torino kit from about 1970, so it's about 50 years old or so. I'm not sure exactly when this company produced these. They made a series that included a 65 Impala, an old Fury, and I'm not sure what else, but I think that 69, 68 um, was about the last model year of car that they produced in this particular series. And it's a neat series, but I got this off eBay. It was shrink wrapped. There was a gentleman selling 10 of these, so I don't know why, where he got them. It's interesting that on the back there is um, instructions. Uh, I wish I'd have thought of that. And so it's, it's a pretty simple build. Um, let me open it up and we'll take a look at the inside. So it's got the typical cellophane on it. The box folds on the end. And okay, let's open this side up here. Yeah, it's, a, it's a typical tuck box. Um, a couple of things. There's no UPC code on it because I guess they didn't have UPC codes back then. There's also no licensing on here, even though it says Ford Torino. I don't see it where it's been officially licensed. So that one must have been before the lawyers attacked us. So let's see what you get in the box. All right, let's start and see what we got here. Okay, this is one piece. I don't know what this tape was hooked to. Probably the axles. Uh, this is a piece that I'm going to have to try to replicate. Uh, and it, it will probably be reused in every kit. Because this will allow the kit to be multi-use for static um, or slot car use. So... This is a piece that I'm going to have to replicate. I have one of these designed. I need to 3D print it, and it is spaced to fit the uh, the charger chassis, the Pioneer charger chassis. So that's the bottom of it. Looks like it came with um, a couple of metal axles. Yep, here they are. And they must press onto these wheels right here. So this was the chrome tree, and it's interesting, the parts fell off the tree in the box, but the chrome is very nice. The grill is, is really nice. It's a one-piece grill. This little uh, tab over here is something that I need to work on. It's kind of strange that they cut it off. So they must have maybe made more than one kit per sprue, and then they just cut it off and maybe you know made two model kits out of each sprue. So let's see, we got a wheel stuck in the back window glass here. They are chrome, but they are the regular steel wheels, no mags. Interesting because they, they used to sell chrome reverse wheels and you put baby moon hubcaps on them. There's some pictures of me with my Mustang running those things. So these are, I guess you would call chrome reverse wheels. They're very nice. The chrome's nice. It took a long time to sort the chrome issue out. Um, the guy who made these, who actually chrome plated this, piece is still in business. He's in Romulus, Michigan. So once I get some trees made, I, I need to see about getting chrome uh, plated parts. This is a requirement, this little tab, if you can see it sticking up, that's what holds it into the spring clip on the racks that he chrome plates them on. So hopefully that's been one of the things that I really wanted was chrome stuff. So, And here's the uh, rear bumper. Notice they connected it on the bottom where you can hide it. Very nice. The taillights are integrated, so if you wanted to light this car up, you'd have to very carefully cut them out and put some, maybe some red cellophane in there. But that's same with the headlights. The headlights are just in the chrome. It, it, that makes it a lot simpler to uh, to produce the part. So let's see what else we got. Okay, here's a uh, roll bar. That's a pretty neat little part, pretty simple. Um, it's odd that it's kind of cut off. I'm not sure about that. Maybe it was attached to this. This is the interior tray. One of the things is this interior tray, well, those tires got gooey. See how the tires melted in the box over the years? And they actually melted the plastic where they were touching to. The tire didn't melt, but the plastic did. Can you see this? Now the plastic dissolved from being next to that. Oh, look at this. I got a bad A pillar here. I'm going to try to fix that. Oh, and the tire was on here. The roof of the car is damaged right here. That's um, it's going to be impossible to hide that it's right on the seam, right on the hood scoop. So uh, as a learning thing, this is a good thing to learn, but it's not going to be able to be made into a car for me. 
um, because that's, well, I don't know if I can fix that or not, but we'll see. But yeah, these, uh, you can see the pillar right here got crushed in the box somehow. I don't know how it was shoved in there. And this one's buckling a little bit, but this one's buckling pretty bad. It has this, the uh, supports back here. One of the things, I don't know if you can see this on the camera. Um, see the sinkholes back here? And they have two in the hood. So these are something that uh, was on my cyclone that I made. And I really want to try to avoid them because I don't like them. But they're caused by these. These alignment pins in the bottom. If you can see these alignment pins down here, wherever the plastic is thick, you're going to get a sinkhole. And they actually have posts with screw holes in. So that's that's where the sinkhole is at. Um, I'm going to try to just make something for the cyclone. I had this little strip you put in there and glued down. But So it's a pretty nice body. It's a one-piece body. Really nice details. Let's see if we can figure out where they did the parting line. Okay, they came up the quarter panel right here. They crossed over right there, went up, and they went across the top of the window. Came back down. They probably crossed right there where the edge of the fender is and then ran up the corner. Yeah, you can feel it. You can catch it right there. It's a little, it's a little rough. So... Interesting, interesting one-piece body. We went over the chrome. Driver tray is very simple, but you know, for a slot car, it works. Um, and it looks like the uh, roll bar just goes right in there. That It's hollowed out on the back, and you have a couple of posts there, I guess, so different chassis may attach to it. Because I think this kit was sort of designed with slot car racers in mind. And then you have rubber tires. And I don't know what's in this rubber. The rubber is still okay. But where, where they touched the plastic, they ruined it. And, okay, so we have four tires. So this is the IMC. Now let's take a look at these decals. These decals actually still look really good. It says Roy Lee. I think it was Leroy Lar Yarbrough they were trying to recreate here with the number 98. I really like this snake here. Um, getting decals printed has been... A real real challenge for me to try to figure out it's going to be a significant investment for me to be able to print white decals but I'd like to do it I'll never get my money back out of it but it'll make for a nicer thing you can see this this um, the white is off off center of that pure I don't know if you can see that or not but the uh, you know the white there is is not centered properly so maybe they put white down and then put the others over top of it I'm not sure also, on this snake, you can see that the white goes out in front of its fangs. And it goes off from the tires. Now, I don't know. That may be... I don't think it's a design because on this one, the white's in front of the tires. And on this one, the white's are like in a different location. So the white's off the top of the flames down here. It's, it's not... I think they probably ran this through as white and then ran it through again. Which you can't um, register. I think they call it registering. It's really hard to get to your piece of paper in the exact same spot. Um, yeah, Hawk Model Company. It says Hawk on the back, but the box says IMC. I think it meant uh, uh, Industrial Model Company or something. I don't know what the MC stood for. They're in Troy, Michigan. Okay, let's put this to the side. And, you know, it's interesting how things were made. Sort of disappointed that the uh, right there we've got some damage on this kit. But... You know, you buy a sealed kit, you never know what you're going to get. And I, I'm going to, I buy these things to learn from them. And it's interesting to see that this is a one-piece body. I'm going to show you a couple other kits um, that I've been looking at how they did parting lines and things like that. So let me move this out of the way over here. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at roughly a, a similar time frame. Is a Palmer Plastics kit. They made some interesting kits and they did some, some shortcuts to sort of help them along this is their 73 barracuda they made things convertible and i'll show you why so that it makes the parting lines a little easier this is actually two different kits that came in here they have a little instruction sheet and the bodies are flat in one piece so that there's no sliding action needed you don't need to have the wedges that slide the sides in and out um, there's no undercuts the seats and everything are one piece I actually like this design for an interior um, because it's much simpler than the one that I did. It's it's just a simple design. Um, with if you want to uh, be able to build it for slot cars, you need a really short interior because the inline slot cars have an engine that sticks up. So if you look, this is a little deeper than this one. So it has to be short. 
and the the uh, cutoff point up here really damaged the hood where the sprue was attached. And this is an, an interesting sprue. Um, I don't understand this part. It may have been where the plastic was injected, but that's uh, just a, a lumpy looking hunk of plastic right there. And the plastic is some kind of a hard, brittle substance. And they came up with a, a chassis underneath too. Um, so this is theirs. You'll notice the axles so that the wheels can turn. I'm going to have just glue on parts, no spinning wheels, because there are a lot of um, regulations nowadays that weren't back then. So if you have something that can even be remotely used as a toy, you lay, you put yourself up for lots and lots of regulations and abuse uh, by online sellers, particularly Amazon. Um, they have been uh, giving me a lot of problems. You, you pretty much, you don't want anything that's even remotely resembling a toy. So I'm just going to have glue on wheels. So it's, if it's a static display, it's a static play. No one's going to get to sit there and play with their car. So this is the bottom piece. It's got a little bit of detail in it. It looks kind of nice. But this is the part that um, is interesting. One of the things Palmer did so that they didn't have the sliding side action. This is the side of the car. And you would take, and they had these little tabs down here. And you would take and glue that on. Something like that. And, you know, you'd have a... When you put it on right, I mean, if you put a little putty in there, I'm pretty sure you could hide that quite well. But it's it's interesting. I actually have seen um, Ravel, I believe, made some like this, and Lindbergh. But you can see that there's a seam right down the side. And I mean, the other thing about the Palmer kits, if you see some Palmer kits in 132nd scale and you think, great, I'm going to buy that mega slot car out of it, their 132nd scale is off. It's more, I don't know, it's got to be a 128, something like that. But it's noticeably off. Noticeably off. Let's look at the wheelbase here, the wheelbase difference. Wheelbase is about the same on these two. But it's just, the car is out of scale. Um, the Palmer kit comes with some chrome, some rubber tires. These are hubcaps. And this is the decal sheet that came with it. And I don't know why it's, oh, it's a sticker. It's a sticker sheet. Interesting. It's not water slide decals. You can see where it's been cut. It's a sticker sheet that's been cut out. So it's just peel and stick stickers. A little bit easier to make and produce. Um, probably a little bit cheaper. My daughter has one of these Cricut things, so that would make it easy. I don't know if this is the right sticker sheet for this car because it says 427 cubic inch, and that was never a, a Mopar engine. They made a 426, a 440, but never a 427. So, yeah, it came with, you know, some chrome some chrome accessories, which are which are, are pretty nice. I mean, this is this is simpler because the back panel, this lower lower splash pan, and the bumper are all in one piece, um, which which makes it a simpler kit. When I designed that side plane, I don't know what I was thinking, but I did know that I wanted to be able to make it with all of the available grill options, and there's quite a few of them. But I could have probably just did something like this and just repeated it over and over again. I learned a lot along the process, so we're going to see what we can do. So this was one method and let's get rid of this and take a look at this little car now this is a slightly smaller scale I'm not sure it's another Palmer um, and it's a Firebird so let's compare that to the Torino again this is 132nd and this is the Firebird so you can see that this the Firebird is underside it's a really nice little kit it's designed you know, and these cars did have a, a, a seam line right down there. But look where they parted this. So there's no undercuts. They put the chassis and everything, and, you know, the exhaust and everything is molded in there. This is really clever. And I don't know if you could do this with a 132nd scale kit or not. But, um, yeah, you know, you, you, have a, uh, you have a seam there. But, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know, that's pretty clever. There's a couple... Uh, advantage of this look at this splash pan that goes way underneath there now i don't know if, if this process could be used for slot cars or not when i got this kit it was missing um something i don't know what it was missing okay here's the tail light panel no crave on this one but i did not get the front bumper with it so the kit was missing the front bumper um and it must have came with a little decal sheet too 
So you see, they make convertible, so they don't have any undercuts. The interior is just one piece. It's a pretty simple, very simple kit. And I don't know what this sold for. It wasn't very much. I think it, yeah, 29 cents. Back in the day, it sold for 29 cents. You can't get a box printed for that much. So I wanted to show you something else about this IMC kit regarding um, the scale of it. This is a standard Torino, and then Carrera makes a Talladega. And you can see the, the wheelbases are very accurate. Let me see if I can put these two bottom to bottom. The wheelbases are correct, but you can, you can see from here, the Talladega had a 6-inch nose on the end of it to make it more aerodynamic that sloped down, and this one didn't. So it's definitely um, it's a little bit shorter. But if you wanted to make a slot car out of this, this... I mean, the tires are tight. Tires are pretty tight. This is a Carrera chassis, but I think a Pioneer chassis would go right up underneath there. It's a darn shame about this. Uh, I'll see if I can fix that somehow. But there you have it. It's a little Torino streetcar. Okay, now um, I want to take a look at one last piece of information that I have to share with you. I have a friend who purchased the Johan Archives. And he gave me this. I don't know if you can see how thick that is. And he just randomly picked a car. And this is how they made the mold back in the day. This, uh, if I can find a date on some of these pictures. So I'm just going to go through these. And you can take a look. And this is this is all hand drawn. Uh, this says front body cavity insert. Each piece of metal that they used to make that mold. This is a paper clips all rusted up was hand drawn out with all the dimensions so this is like a tail light panel here um, every single piece they had to hand draw out and this is now one of the things that that um he was thinking was could i use this look at this this is i guess the uh grill edge and this is shows you the little ridges um could I use this to recreate something? But nowadays, everything's stored in a computer. The entire contents of this folder is just one click on your computer, and it's all stored away there. It says body cavities rear view. It says remove body core. I don't know if you can read these. Maybe I'm reading it for no reason. I'm setting upside down while I'm filming this. So, But yeah, all the dimensions are here to create this entire car mold. And... Johan models. I guess it's Johan or Johan. I don't know how you pronounce it. Johan. Um, does that have a date on it? Mm, 66 American Grill. I think it's a Rambler American is what they were recreating here. So here's another drawing. This looks like it's been on the shop floor for a while. And it's got red corrections all over it. Um, it's quite a long piece of paper to do this one. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this. It's pretty faint, but this is like a side view of the entire car. So, yeah, Rambler American. Um, it was kind of fascinating to think that those kits that I showed you, yeah, 66 American chassis, those kits that I showed you were all done using this type of technology. This is some kind of plastic that's drawn onto. Very sharp. Very sharp. Um... You know, whoever drew this had a very sharp pencil. So I'm just going to go through this real quick and see. This is all that you needed to design this. There's, I guess, the interior tray. If I come across anything interesting, we'll stop and take a look at it. Oh, there's the steering wheel. Just the steering wheel part alone took, took this much effort to draw out with the angles and everything. But it's an amazing amount of stuff that went into one kit. And back before computers, all of this stuff had to have been, somebody was doing some complicated math right, right down here. I don't know what they were figuring out, but it looks pretty, uh, pretty intense. I reckon they had slide rules back then. I don't know. I learned how to use a slide rule at one time, but I couldn't do it now. Okay, one quarter 20 tap. Half inch deep, two holes in the core. So some of this I do understand, but for me to try to recreate this, 
This is way out of my league. Way out of my league. Okay, I got a date on that one. Look at that. April 10th, 1963. I don't know if this was printed out or, or drawn. I think it was... I don't know. That's empty. There's more in here. So yeah, he has the archives for this company. I think he has the blueprints for every kit that they made. But sadly, I mean, I don't really think this is of any use to us today with computers and CAD and everything like that. Um, I have a, uh, I purchased a 3D scanner on Kickstarter. It should be arriving in May, which would be next month. And they've been keeping up on their, their orders. A lot of people have got them already, but I missed out on the early birds, so I'm on the later thing. So here's some more drawings. It's just fascinating, the kind of stuff that people used to do back years ago. Oh, what's this? A little Yo 1963. This is their... Uh, Johan Models, Detroit, Michigan. It's a little flyer, I guess. Convertibles and hardtops. I don't know where this one fit in here. Let me see. Dodge Polaro. Da, 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 da. I don't. Rambler American. Is that the... Uh, no, that's not it. Maybe it's that one, the convertible that we're looking at. I don't know. But, yeah, this is a uh, blueprint for one kit. And I think he has all the blueprints for all the kits. If I was a, you know, a trained engineer, I could probably look at this and make some sense out of it. Oh, it's a 66 Rambler wagon dealer. I guess they made a, a promo car for the dealer? It was a station wagon? I don't know. So, yeah, I won't bore you to death going through all these, but it's just a lot of stuff. Oh, look at this. This is door interior. Just the details and all the... Uh, Vinyl dielectric. Oh, that's interesting. It's got colors on here. That's strange. I don't I don't understand this. It's got the colors on here. It says vinyl dielectric. I understand the dielectric. They were EDM in that probably with the dielectric thing. Here's the front seat. I'll put a timestamp in this video, so if you want to skip this part, you can. But I just find this fascinating to look at these documents from 1963. There's the emblem for how this company made plastic model kits all those years ago. Wow, that's a drawing, I guess, of the hubcap. Now, I don't know if these were shared from Rambler to the model company so that they could make an accurate model kit. Oh, there's another one of those flyers. A couple more of them in there. I'm not sure what all this is. Just more little sketches. Maybe guys are taking a lunch break and drawing some sketches on how to make things. I don't know. Yeah, they were sketching on the back of another flyer. This is their new for 62 flyers. That must have been an old flyer. Oh, the paper clip is rusted onto that. Yeah, so this is our 1962 flyer from Johan Models. Or Johan, I don't know. And they must have had extra flyers and he just used them as scrap paper. And drew on the back of them. Yeah, that's another 62 flyer. I'm, I really don't know what all this stuff is. Uh, I don't. And it's interesting if this was a, a uh, an extremely desirable body it may be worth looking into a little more closely but I don't think there's a whole lot of demand for 63 American kits so so that's about it in my continued search for history lessons on how things were made how they came together I'm going to try to put these back in here in the same order although I don't think it matters it's an interesting for me 66 Rambler miscellaneous and 124 prints it says over here so it must have been 124 scale at the time i thought i thought they usually made 125th but someone once told me that they used box scale in other words they scaled the car to fit into the box 
So this is the uh, research material. This is what we're going to try to recreate, um, particularly the IMC car, although minus the melted rubber. Putting rubber tires in is not going to happen. I'm just going to put in little plastic nubs because the idea is just to get a replica body. That is really a bummer right there. But um, So this is the IMC kit, and we have some things going on here. We got our boxes printed. Go through there, and I'm working on decals. This is um, I've been using uh, laser printed decals. I take I go out and get them printed, but because that no one has white ink, you have to print the entire background in black, just so that the white can shine through in these little areas. Now. I've been looking into a white toner printer, and it's it's multi thousand dollars. It's a it's a pretty big investment for a slight improvement in decal quality. But I kind of really would like to have decals like that, particularly like this one here, pop color. You know, you have to match that red up pretty closely, or you have to trim it as close as you possibly can in order to make this car look good. And I, I mean, I've done some that looked okay, but if you had this on a clear sheet with real vibrant white um, decals it would make an incredible difference because you could paint any shade, shade of red you want because different printers come out differently. If I get these printed at Staples they look different than if I get them printed at UPS so it's a bit of a challenge um, I'm looking into it. I, I got a lot of things we're working on so okay this video is long sorry about the extreme length of it and rambling on and stuff but I just want to share with you some old uh, model kits how they did things how they parted things and um, how we're trying to learn from the way they did things. People were resourceful and they made things. So pretty neat. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment if you have any uh, knowledge about Johan or Palmer or if you can direct me to any more resources that I can use to sort of um, learn how to do this stuff because I'm just flying by the seat of my pants on this stuff. Okay, guys, thanks. Have a good one. Thank you.